Hello, Rabotai, Bishut Ma'alat Arav. We're continuing our study of the Taryag Mitzvot. We're up to Mitzvah number 211. Shalot Tishkavna Hanashim in Behemot. You got lucky, Rabotai. Yesterday we learned about the Lab in the Torah that says that a male is not allowed to be with an animal. Bishtiality. It's a lot of in the Torah. Interestingly enough, the Torah lists a separate love when it comes to a lady going with a behema, as the Pasuk says in Aharimot Perek Yudhet Pasuk Chabgimal Ve'isha Lo Ta'amod Lefnei Behema Lereba'a Now, it's a little strange that the Torah would list two different lavin over here. Basically, it's the same Isur. Humans are not allowed to go with animals. But Harambam listed them separately, and Harambam has a proof that they should be separate lavin. He brings a proof from the Gemara in Kiritut. On the first page there it says, Lam midvav kiritut yesh Torah, that there's 36 lavin in the Torah that are punishable by the severe punishment of karet. And if you look at the list over there in the Gemara, it lists a man going with an animal as one and a lady going as an animal as a separate one. So from the fact that you see the Gemara listed them as separate kiritut, Harambam learned from over there that they must be counted as well in the minyana mitzvot as separate. Just a few of the laws, similar to what we learned yesterday. If a gedola an adult, and in this case a female adult is 12 years old, not like a boy which is 13, and she went with the animal, whether the animal went in the normal way, kedarka or shelo kedarka, as we learn, both of them are put to death. The punishment is the severe punishment of sikila, both for the perpetrator and for the animal itself. If she was less than 12 years old, the animal is put to death, However, we said that she doesn't get put to death because she's a ketana. However, the Chinuch reminds us again, vira'ui the yasera. It's proper that she gets a some sort of punishment. But if she's less than three years old, everybody walks. The animal remains alive, and they don't punish her at all. Now, obviously, this law applies in all places at all times. Again, b'mezid, with witnesses, hayevet sekila. If there's no witnesses, <clears throat> There's a karet, shogeg, hayab, hatat. We learned also that if she does this with shogeg, uh, they don't put the animal to death. Now, I must point out, Rabotai, this is one of the exceptions that guim are also commanded on. We know the guim have also upon them seven mitzvot in Noah. One of the seven is arayot. Now, clearly, the arayot, the forbidden relationships of the goyim are not as uh, vast as the relationships that are forbidden to the Yehudim. As a matter of fact, there's only seven forbidden relationships that the goyim have. I will list them. Em, they cannot be with their mother. Eshet av, the wife of their father. Achot me'em. It's interesting. They're not allowed to go with their sister, but only the sister that comes from the same mother. If it's a sister from the father, so it's permissible for goyim. Eshet ish, obviously is forbidden as well. They cannot commit adultery to a married lady. Mishkav zakhur, homosexuality is forbidden for the goyim as well. And this law of behema is also included. It's a very interesting law that could be discussed at this point. The Hinuch talks about it at length. We have a rule in the Talmud that says, Ger shenit gayer kekatan shenolad dame. That when a person converts, so it's considered as if he's just born. That means if he's just born, as we say, born again, he has no relatives. He's not related to his mother, he's not related to his sister, he's not related to his children. He has no relatives. He's just born as if he was born in a vacuum. And therefore, from the Torah law, once a convert converts, he's allowed to marry any of his relatives. 
including his mother, assuming his mother converted as well. Take for example, you have a guy de Uven, his mother uh, converts, they're not related anymore. We know biologically they're related, but once they convert, they're considered two new creatures that have no connection between them, and therefore would be permissible from the Torah law for a convert to even marry his mother. However, there's a big however over here. The rabbis came along and forbade it. The question is why? And the Gemara says, "Shelo yomru, sheba mikedusha hamura mikedusha kala." It's a bad uh, representation on Judaism because the people are going to say, "Look at this! When he was a goy, he was forbidden, and now he comes to be Jewish, and now he's permissible." <laughs> what kind of business? That means they're going to say that the laws of the goyim are more strict than the laws of the Judaism. He's coming from a Kiddushah Hamura, where he was forbidden to be with his mother. And now he comes to Kiddushah Kala, to a less severe Kiddushah. That's not good. So therefore, Medrab Banan, because of that issue, they came along and forbade the Goy to be with anybody that was forbidden to him before will not be permissible. However, for somebody that was permissible to him before will remain permissible. Because then you don't have the sevara that is coming from Kiddusha Hamurat to Kiddusha Kala. Therefore, if a convert converts and now he wants to marry his sister from his father, that was permissible for him to do when he was a goy. Now that he converts, he's not related to her. And therefore it's a lateral move. Nothing changes. Or for that matter, he would be allowed to marry all these relatives that come from the father's side that are not forbidden to a convert. Because he's not going from a lower kiddushah to a higher, or a, a higher to a lower. It was permissible before, and the Torah is permissible now. Again, the laws of uh, Giyud and what they're permissible are very complicated, but those are just some of the laws. This is the end of the mitzvot in Parashat Aharimot, and we could not have learned it at a better time as we conclude the Shovavim period of the year. This is a leap year, which is Shovavim Tad, which these specific weeks that we're in now, in the last couple of days actually, are the days that we make the Tikkun on all these type of forbidden relationships and different Hat Shalom Averot uh, uh, related to this item. So I think it was appropriate when Hashemayim, we don't plan it, that these mitzvot came exactly during the time, during the Shavuim, we learned through the whole Acharemot. Now that we learned it, Prezat Hashem, we should be zocher, that the tikkun, uh, that the Shavuim, like the Arizal said, makes for our Neshamot, it should be done through the learning of these mitzvot, but more importantly, through the actions that we have to accept upon ourselves, not only to talk about Kedushah, but to live a life of Kedushah. Prezat Hashem, Amen. Amen.